This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. Interesting week for betting across the NFL because we've got a boatload of low totals due to wind, due to good defenses, due to a litany of reasons. We've got some intriguing spots. Gardner Minshew starting here for the Eagles. We've got a lot of weird stuff. Seeing the Brock Purdy magic can continue. We got Lawrence versus Wilson on Thursday night. It's a pretty fun slate. We're going to break down this slate with Austin Swaim of Number Fire getting his read on the, this week's biggest games and his favorite bets for Week 16 at FanDuel Sportsbook. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire.com. Joined here, as mentioned, by Austin Swaim. Check him out on Twitter at aswaim3. You can find his work over at NumberFire.com, doing UFC and to- on top of, like, 16 other different sports. Austin, I appreciate the time. How are you doing today? I I am doing very well, Jim. This is a very interesting NFL slate. I didn't like the board last week and I paid the price for it, <laughs> given that I didn't have a lot go my way. But um, I really like the way this board sets up. We got a lot of big dogs and uh, and it's a definitely a good looking week outside of the weather, of course. The weather is not fun um, unless you enjoy uh low scoring games which i don't for the most part um but i think that they'll be interesting and it's a it's just a week of extremes you've just got massive extremes across the board and we've got question marks a quarterback for tennessee baltimore etc cetera, etc cetera. so i'm glad you feel good about this week because i am i am to be determined i think is the way i'd feel about this week really i i think the uglier the better so that's typically what i'm looking at that's why I'm here, man. You know, we got to <laughs> gotta fill that quota. We're going to break down Austin and hopefully get his read on this week's slate here in just a bit. But first, a reminder to make sure you are subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. We talked some men's college basketball. John Rothstein earlier on today to get his read on early season takeaways across men's college basketball. Talked about which teams he thinks are clustered near the top uh, to be the top team in the nation. Talked about some futures markets and much more. Find that by searching for Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. Hit subscribe. And if you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review as well. Looking to get more out of this NFL season? Well, now is the perfect time to get FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because now new customers get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's free bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It is safe, secure, and super easy to use. And you can get everything from the money line to touchdown scores to over under yards. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same game parlay. So don't miss your chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in free bets when you join FanDuel. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Must be 21 plus in select states. First online real money wager only. Refund issued as non withdrawable free bets that expire in. 14 days. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 Gambler or visit fanduel.com slash RG. In Arizona, 1 800 Next Step or text Next Step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1 888 789 7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1 800 9 with it. In Wyoming and Kansas, 1 800 522 4700 or in Kansas, ksgamblinghelp.com. In Louisiana, 1 877 770 stop. In Maryland, mdgamblinghelp.org. In New York, 1 877 8 hope and wire text open y or in West Virginia, go to 1 800 gambler.net. Now, Austin has mentioned. This week is littered with awful weather. They're, they're, the word dangerous has been used in several forecasts in Cleveland and Chicago. Seems fun. Are you looking to bet those games thanks to increased uncertainty? Or do you kind of make those those outlier games stay away on your card? Well, Jim, you know, you you know this well that the really the adverse conditions, they more so affect passing games for offenses. They can lead to some more random numbers. My answer, I think, would be not necessarily. I think there are certain exceptions where I feel like 
a team could be undervalued relative to their weather conditions. A good example, taking it away from er, this week, earlier this year, Cleveland scheduled to face Buffalo in that snowstorm. I really like the Browns plus eight and a half points in that game before it got moved to Detroit because they had the better running game. I thought they would be able to adapt to those conditions better than Buffalo. Of course, it got moved to a dome, so that was all moot. The line didn't move. I stayed away from Cleveland. So I take that into account when I'm handicapping how these teams would move the ball and how that would work as far as their offensive styles and seeing if I can see value one way or another. But ultimately, I am trying to find value with positional grouping matchups, and that can still exist even in a blizzard or a flood. You know, both teams have to play in it. So it's something I really evaluate on a case-by-case basis. So you feel confident in your ability to properly account for it. And I think that's kind of the rate I'm getting, correct? I, I think so. I, yeah. I, I would say a large part of my process has to do with offensive and defensive line matchups. And those guys, they're the most stable positional groups in adverse weather. So that that really doesn't change for me. Now, if there is a team like Miami who's very explosive on the perimeter and all of a sudden the weather is going to be bad. You know, I got a bad read on that Buffalo game because the weather actually for most of it last week wasn't as bad as was expected, you know, earlier in the week. We knew on Saturday morning it wasn't going to be too bad until the very end. But, you know, it is one of those things that you can kind of, you could definitely whiff trying to guess it improperly, but it's something that uh, is really case by case for me. I, that's a, it. Every single game is different. It certainly is. And it actually does start off the bad weather on Thursday night. We don't get to usually talk the Thursday night game because we're typically recording Thursday, but Hey, we're talking here on a Wednesday. So let's, let's talk the headliner this week. Jags jets up in uh, East Rutherford, New Jersey. The jets are now point and a half favorites. That's intriguing because it was Jags minus one and a half mm-hmm. money line had gone to minus minus one twelve for Jacksonville, but they're now even money. So Someone's on the Jets here. Total is 36 and a half due to the rain and the uh, wind in this game. And I find this game fascinating on both sides because the Jags are on a heater. Uh, Everyone wants to dunk on Zach Wilson justifiably at times on Twitter for sure. But how are you viewing this game? Can the Jags keep it up here? Keep their playoff hopes alive? What are you seeing? Whatever this number ends up at, wherever it ends up, because like you're saying, it's been all over the board. It's been kind of hovering around this one and a half spot on both sides. I think no matter where it ends up, it is a buy low spot here on the Jets after that embarrassing loss against Detroit left a backup tight end totally uncovered last week. And then the Jags like made that statement against Dallas, who we believe is one of the best teams in the NFL. So to me last week, the thing that I wanted to see, because I had tweeted about this earlier, Zach Wilson, when he was benched, he went through a stretch of really difficult defense. He's got the Patriots twice, got some really tough matchups that were at the time top 10 in number fires, uh, nerd rankings as far as pass defense. The Lions, not as much. And he was able to move the ball, had over 300 yards passing. That's what I wanted to see entering this matchup because Jacksonville is a massive pass funnel. They are number fire's sixth worst, uh, sixth best rush defense and third worst pass defense. So they really lean toward the air. And I think that's a good thing for how the Jets are because they've been kind of searching for their running game with Brees, with Brees Hall out because Zonovan Knight's gotten some carries. They've mixed in Michael Carter more in the backfield. I really like the way this matchup sets up for the New York passing game with their perimeter weapons they have. And then, of course, the defense. Jack's, Jets defense, top 10 against both the rush and the pass in number fires metrics. Could be getting back Quinn and Williams this week. That is a huge boon for their defensive line. And by the way, Cam Robinson now out for the year for Jacksonville's offensive line. So that's a huge swing on the offensive line. I think it's a buy low spot for the Jets, sell high spot on the Jags. And I do like the Jets uh, in this game as long as the number ends up short of three. Has it moved too much uh, for you to like the Jets still, or do you think that there's still value there? I think there's still value. I'd take this line up to two and a half, uh, okay. where, where you get to three with Jacksonville and with their offense that is frankly much more dynamic is where you start to get concerned. But at this point, you know, I I don't know where this line's going to end up as far as when we get to kick off on Thursday, but I still would take the Jets at this number. Anywhere up to two and a half would be good in my book. So you were talking about the matches for Wilson. I had the same note because um, entering last week, this has since changed because San Francisco's moved up, but entering last week, uh, Zach Wilson's previous, his final four starts to come against the teams ranked second, second, third, and fourth in my defensive power rankings. And so you'd think that's like, oh, almost the toughest schedule, never faced the the toughest defense, but toughest defense is the Jets. So we actually yeah. could not have faced them. Right. Um, so it was a tough stretch. Uh, he was... Up and down, but I thought that like at least the ups were higher than they usually are. Yeah. The coaching staff she seemed to show a bit more faith in him, at least in the first half. They did pedal back on him in the second half after that pick, justifiably. Um, 
But I thought it was interesting too. I thought that people may have fixated on the interception a bit too much. Right. Um, there were some okay things in there. Like at least he was willing to chuck it. The confidence seemed a bit higher, which was good. So I didn't think it was all negative uh, for Wilson in that game. He faced an extreme amount of blitzes as well. So as he should, yeah, you should blitz, blitz the hell out of him. I would yeah, do the exact same thing. Right. The Jets offensive line is, is part of that struggle as well. We saw Mike White got popped a ton a couple of weeks ago as well. That's, that's a, for sure a problem, but Jacksonville doesn't get as much pressure as you'd think with Josh Allen, Trayvon Walker, top overall pick on the outside, their pressure rates more mid pack. So um, that to me, that's another plus for a struggling Jets offensive line in this one. Yeah, we you talked about uh, you see like the Jets minus one and a half. My numbers have uh, one model has the Jags minus one point eight five. Other yeah. one has the Jets minus three. So I'm gonna stay away. I'm just gonna watch this game. Um, I'm gonna enjoy it. I'm gonna let it ride. Not worry about it. I'm gonna enjoy some football. Hopefully the rain chills out and I can just enjoy it and not bet it and enjoy. So we'll root for the Jets <laughs> for you. But I'm not taking any part of it. Let's move now to the Commanders at the 49ers, where the 49ers are seven and a half point favorites, despite the fact this total is down to 37 and a half. And I get it, man. Brock Purdy's looking good. Um, he's uh been playing well so far hasn't been pushed too much even with no Debo this past week he played really well now facing a very tough defense so can the 49ers cover a big number here so I I love the commanders in this spot and I think the biggest thing is that the clock is up on the 49ers and I don't mean that they're Super Bowl clock or anything like that because of course they're going to be relevant down the stretch they've now covered five straight weeks and in my estimation that means that betting NFL spreads is a little bit like betting stocks you are getting peak you're buying the 49ers right now at peak value when it comes to the betting consumer you think of the Bengals as another team that have covered plenty this year you don't necessarily get the best teams that have the best value on them and now here we're laying seven and a half points it is at home Brock Purdy has been excellent 0.24 passing net expected points in number fires model by the way funny enough of all people with over 75 attempts tied exactly with Jimmy Garoppolo that's kind of <laughs> ironic and you know that's at the so very funny. least here I look at Washington they're going to force San Francisco to play with their opposite hand. They may win and they may cover doing so, but Washington is number fires, number one rushing defense. And I think they are the strongest rushing defense in the NFL. This, the strategy with birdie has been give Christian McCaffrey the ball because he's very good at football. They've given him 73 touches uh, in the last three weeks with Purdy playing most of the action. Now I don't know if McCaffrey is going to be quite as effective. Obviously he can still make strides, but I think they will force Purdy to do more off schedule to be a little bit further behind the chains on second and third down. So I like the value I'm getting with Washington in this spot. The number is key as well with seven and a half. And there's a little bit of a pros Joe split here on the under 40% uh, or so of bets on, on the, uh, on the under 79% of the money. And that means those seven and a half points with Washington, they're intrinsically more valuable if we're expecting a lower game total than what is posted so far. Yeah, I'm confused why that totals come down so much. Like 37 and a half is a very low number. Right. Um, I know that the defenses are amazing. And I think that's a big part of why it's down there. But like, it feels so low. Yeah, I, I think it feels low as well. And this is one of the spots that's not as badly as impacted by weather as some of right. the other. It's three mile per hour winds. Yeah, right. It's it's And so I think it's interesting that the totals come down there. I would lean on the under here as well. But my favorite bet is the spread. Uh, given that I get the touchdown hook. And you look at the difference in motivation here. Washington has a huge hill uphill climb now to get into the playoffs after losing to the Giants. San Francisco already broke out the T-shirts. They're pretty much locked into a 2-3 matchup with Kirk Cousins, whether it's in Minneapolis or in San Francisco. So um, I think that's another edge when I'm handicapping this game that I look at as well. Yeah, it's an interesting spot here. I think that the the tough part I have, like, like this is like a blind spot for me. Like I can't justify betting Taylor Heineke against this defense. Um, <laughs> like that's, that's tough, man. Um, I think I'm sometimes a bit too harsh on Heineke. Uh, Cause he like, he's frisky a little bit, but like just it's tough. It's really difficult. Like I was, I had the giants money line for both those games and pushed on one, one, the other, but like yeah. I never felt like afraid betting against him. And I feel I'm doing it here again. Cause I, I like the 49ers, but I don't know. It's uh, maybe I'm too low on him. I'm not sure. Hey, I, you know, the thing is, is that I feel like I'm not getting Heineke as a plus. I usually see him as a net negative anyway. And yes, I, I can definitely see this going off the rails against the 49ers defense, which by the way, has recovered to top five in offensive net expected points allowed since they got healthy. They went through that lull. Think of yeah. the chargers game when their personnel wasn't healthy, but now they're back. They're healthy. Um, 
I, I just, I like the way Washington's running the ball. They outgained New York significantly last week. Um, you know, there, there are a lot of underlying metrics like yards per play that point to Washington actually should have comfortably won that game last week, but had the key red zone turnovers, had the sack, sack strip by Kayvon Thibodeau. So um, from, from a per, from a moving the ball between the twenties perspective, I think Washington's a bit undervalued, even though, yeah, he takes a lot of chances and he could go sideways quick against Nick Bosa and the fellas. I was very grateful they did not uh, come through. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Very grateful for that, personally. Let's move now to the Eagles at the Cowboys. Fascinating game here. Fascinating market here as well, because yeah. the spread is down to four and a half. Uh, it was six. I thought it might get to six and a half, uh, but it's now four and a half. Total is up to 47 and a half. So not just a total move, uh, spread move in, in favor of the Eagles, but also the total is going to have a point and a half. So... I find this fascinating. Uh, we're probably going to see uh, uh, Gardner Minshew in this game with no Jalen Hurts. So what are your expectations for the Eagles here? And can they cover four and a half? I think they absolutely can. And it really, this, what makes this so interesting is doesn't it feel like we're kind of trying to place a line value on Jalen Hurts to Gardner Minshew? What does that gap look like? It, it ballooned up to six in some spots yesterday, and now it's come back down to four and a half on FanDuel Sportsbook. Um, I, I would expect it to be all over the Cowboys in this spot as a short home favorite, given that the Eagles have been blowing teams out and are at peak value there. But then now with Minshew, it's a different story. Now, I think one game of Gardner Minshew is a different story than having Gardner Minshew as your starting quarterback going into a season, for instance. So he's actually shown to be very good last year, uh, 0.3 passing net expected points per drop back. This year, very limited action, 0.53 passing net expected points per drop back. For context there, Patrick Mahomes, 0.32 for the season. So Minshew has been excellent in very limited duty, but I think limited duty is all you'd want to keep him to. And the key matchup that is so fascinating and why I think I'd like to see Eagles Cowboys again in the postseason, Dallas is 40% pressure rate, best in the NFL. Philadelphia's pressure rate allowed 19% best in the NFL on that side. Those two, that's that matchup is incredibly fascinating to see who gets the best of it. We saw Cooper Rush try to make a late rally in Philadelphia. Um, but I think the Eagles here, anything greater than three and a half points is showing a lot of value, giving, getting that key hook and getting that number in this spot, because I expect Dallas to actually slow the pace in this one. Philadelphia has been a bit of a run funnel and we know Dallas is willing to do that. Um, I think the stars align perfectly here for this game to stay close, to stay competitive. And the total though, is moving in a very interesting direction. If you notice Jim. Well, hi. <laughs> Seems a little high for me. Uh, yeah, I've got a forty-five point three personally yeah. on uh, based on my model, so I was a bit surprised by that. the The movement towards Philly, I thought, made sense because uh, even accounting for Minshew, I've got uh, the Cowboys by three point nine nine in one model, and the Cowboys by five point seven another. So, you know, the other one is is higher on the Cowboys than the current model, but I think that six might have been a bit heavy. So. I could end up looking like an idiot here because I had a sizable-ish bet on the Cowboys minus three when it was there, and it seemed like there was something you know up with Hurts at that hurts. point. Mm -hmm. But then I also took the Eagles money line at plus two fifteen when it got there. So the un the, it's undoubtedly going to be Cowboys by two or Cowboys by one. <laughs> I can guarantee it's going to wind up there, right? Um, which is where we had this line before the Hurts injury came out, and um, right. that's kind of what I was expecting as a more close game. I want to. I'm very interested in to see how the betting activity breaks down throughout the weekend on this line. I haven't fired on it yet. Um, but I will, as soon if I start to see movement toward Philadelphia and move, losing that key number of three and a half, because I just wonder, is the public, are they going to react more so to Minshew starting for Philadelphia, or are they going to react more so toward, well, Minshew's just as good as Jalen Hurts. That's kind of the narrative that Chris Sims put out there, right? And if that, it depends on which side the public takes on that will probably create the value in this game. I think I, I recommend, I'm totally good with both of those tickets you have as far as value. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about it. I think I just like took what I thought was value in both situations. Yes. Um, I will profit if one of them wins because of the scaling on them, which helps. Yeah. Um, but like, I'm not sure how I feel about it. Like, I, I don't know if I made the right call there. I just felt like both those wound up being values, but I don't know, man. Um, I think, I think six is a little heavy. Four and a half. I think is more appropriate based on what my numbers are saying here. Um, but it's a fascinating situation. I would love to see, like you said, a rematch here because 
I want to see both teams with their starting quarterbacks because the first right. one was Cooper Rush, which is not the same as Dak Prescott. I think Dak is balling. I know that there's like a narrative that Dak's not playing well, but that's because Noah Brown's dropping passes. It's not sure. Dak's fault. He's made mistakes too. I want to make that clear. But like, it's not his fault um, for no. most of this stuff. So and, I think it's a fascinating game. And, and by the way, here's what's happened to the Cowboys is they flirted with the Texans loss and the Jaguars. They aren't getting home anymore. They have one sack, one sack each of the past two weeks. That yeah. pressure rate I mentioned is great, but if it ultimately doesn't impact the game and it doesn't prevent opposing quarterbacks from going up and down the field, it's not that big of a deal. So I really want to see how Dallas's defense responds. They definitely have the motivation here. Um, they need this game if they're going to win the NFC. So otherwise, they're pretty much locked into the five seed. Yeah, that pressure even more concerning when their secondary is as banged up as theirs is right now. Like they've mm -hmm. lost a lot of guys back there. And if you can't get home with that, you're going to get shredded. So for sure, uh, we'll see how that goes. But I think four and a half, I think think it stays there but it's been a wild market so far we'll see how that goes okay awesome open up the board for you for week 16 where else do you see value at FanDuel Sportsbook so this is this is absolutely kind of a pros versus Joe's capital of the weekend you have the Detroit Lions they are red hot winners of six of seven they, right they are world beaters they're on the way to the playoffs Dan Campbell's getting coach of the year buzz now they're heading to a Carolina team that dropped a disappointing one against Pittsburgh last week the line's only two and a half Interestingly enough, Detroit is receiving overwhelmingly a majority of bets and a majority amount of the handle here on FanDuel Sportsbook. This is a very intriguing matchup to me because you remember what the Panthers did two weeks ago. They ran it all over Seattle. They ran for 233 yards in that game. Detroit is number five's third worst rushing defense, and that's kind of where the Jets couldn't really get things going against them last week. I had the Jets in that one um, and obviously didn't end up working out in any of the excruciating ways it did. But you look at Sam Darnold. He's actually playing decent. 0.16 passing net expected points for dropbacks since retaking the starting role. And Carolina, they're a top half rushing offense in that same stretch. And keep in mind, they faced the TJ Watt Steelers. They faced the Broncos. It hasn't been a bunch of cupcakes like you'd expect in the NFC South. And um, I think the Panthers, they need this game to stay in the playoff push. Obviously, Detroit does as well, but they've got the home crowd. Detroit isn't a crowd that like Pittsburgh that will travel. That sounded like a Pittsburgh home game last week in Charlotte. Um, I can't, I almost can't even get past the fact that this was the one and six Lions and the two and five Panthers who just fired <laughs> Matt Rule. And we are now, hey, this is a playoff must win, winner go home game. Right. I like the team getting points here. I think the Panthers win outright and cool Detroit down just a little bit. Yeah. It's, I keep forgetting that the Panthers can make the playoffs. Um, <laughs> because it, they shouldn't be able to. Right. But they've got 22% odds uh, at 538 right now. Right. So, like, it's not even that they can. It's like they have a good shot at it. Um, I I do like the, the lines in this game, personally. Um, the passing offense being as efficient as it is, and mm -hmm. that does translate to to the games they played on the road if you have a Monroe St. Brown healthy. Sure. So it could be because my son, Jared, is playing quarterback for the Lions in this game, um, my darling boy. But I think I do like the Lions here. Um, you know, I've not gotten any movement on that. It stayed. It's been minus two and a half, minus 115 ever since I talked about it yesterday. So it has not moved at all in my favor, which is annoying. But I'm curious if that changes at all, whether or the wind has gone up a hair, I believe in that game. It is currently at 11 miles per hour. I think it was nine yesterday. So up a little, little bit. That's a little bit concerning too, but we'll see any other ones you like for this week. So I, I have one more and I want you to try to not projectile vomit onto the screen. When I talk, I'm talking about the Denver Broncos here and the Los Angeles Rams, which is not a game that I think a lot of people are looking forward to at this stage. The Nickelodeon Obviously, game. Everyone's excited for it. That's true. We'll crown a new M MVP in that one, but you know, injury news needs to develop a little bit. I don't really know what's going on with Aaron Donald and what the motivation is for LA to bring him back. And he makes a big difference for their rush defense, but here's what I can't get past Baker Mayfield and his lead receiver. Van Jefferson facing number fires, top overall pass defense. It sounds like a disaster waiting to happen. You, the, when he was moving the ball on the Raiders a couple weeks ago, the Raiders are number fires worst overall pass defense by a lot. And that's a sizable difference. And, you know, since cup went down five games ago, Rams ninth worst in offensive NEP points uh, per play seventh worst on defense as far as offensive NEP allowed per play. 
I think they're the worst team in football at the moment. And I, you know, I admit there's a bit of a mental block from that because they have the Super Bowl ring from yeah. last year to say that, but they are just so deficient on talent. And we know Denver's defense is good, and I'm not really concerned about motivation. Given they came out, they played hard and they beat the crud out of Arizona last week. And you know, Denver has the best unit in this game. I think Russell Wilson started to shake a couple of cobwebs off before the unfortunate hit in the Kansas City game. So I think they can move the ball, especially if Aaron Donald's not there. I will watch this line carefully with the Donald news and see how it's moving because it's actually moving towards Denver's direction now. And the value might evaporate if it gets over that three, three and a half marker. But I like the Broncos laying less than a field goal. Um, they'll probably have a pro Denver crowd out there in Los Angeles as well. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a vomit game. You're right. Uh, <laughs> definitely, definitely a vomit game there for sure. But I think that the Broncos are the better team because like you said, the defense, if both offenses suck, which defense yeah. is better and the Broncos defense with the current injuries where they're at, honestly, they've been better the whole year, but yep. um, with where things currently stand, they're the better defense. So I agree. Uh, Broncos probably the right side in that game uh, with that one. Uh, yeah. Not even Ben Skoranek left for uh, old Baker. Just <laughs> poor Baker. Throwing to two two Atwell Van Jefferson, you know, rough life. Uh, they lost another offensive lineman. I think their center Brian Allen's now too. So just a, a rough situation there. They, the, they are Angels trying Rams. to. They are trying to pack it in, man. They're just trying to save bodies and pack it in and try to regroup for next year. But it's weird because they're still playing hard. Yeah. So like, kudos to Sean McVay. Good for you, man. Like that's but, awesome. Like I'm glad they're doing that. But like at some point, talent matters, and they don't have a whole lot of it right now. So that's right. <laughs> you know, good for them for fighting into Week 16. But it's uh, you know, just. You need talent at some point. It sounds like Cortland sure. Sutton might be back this week too, which would help uh, for the Broncos as well. Well, that's all we got here for today. So Austin, I want to say thank you uh, for swinging by, breaking down your thoughts on NFL week number 16. Uh, good luck to you. And I'm looking forward to having you ag on again soon. Yeah, for sure, Jim. Uh, Merry Merry Christmas. Happy holidays to you and yours. Uh, you. We definitely hope you spend time with your family. Merry Christmas to all the listeners as well. Uh, it's a great time of year. We have a lot of football this weekend, some college football bowl games too. It should be a lot of fun. And some of us will be snowed in the entire weekend. Correct. More excuse to watch football. Can't complain about that. Uh, check out Austin on Twitter at aswame 3 I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. -N -N -E As Austin said, happy holidays, everybody. Be safe. Be healthy. Uh, have a great holidays. And we'll talk to you once again next week, Tuesday, for NFL Week 17 First Look. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 